Upskies, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the GX WrestleCast. We're on episode 88 of my little wrestling recap show, where once a week I go through all of the major WWE and AEW shows, let you know what's going on in there, storyline-wise matches, if there's anything really good, I'll let you know, and at the end of it, I give out my three stars of the week, awarding the three best matches that I saw during the week, and if there's any major pay-per-views, I will do a separate podcast, for the most part, for those pay-per-views, sometimes, like last week, I just kind of threw in Fastlane, because it was a fairly short, not a very over-the-top pay-per-view, so was like a 10-15 minute review just just slid that in there in last week's episode so if you're looking for it that's where that review is so yeah let's dive into the recap here starting off with WWE we got Monday Night Raw in Omaha and they are kicking it off with the world heavyweight champion Seth Frickin Rollins he is in the ring he's there to cut a promo Kind of makes it sound like he's going to, like, relinquish the title. Something really bad is going to happen. Like, maybe he's going to retire. But he's just kidding. Rollins says he is just getting started. He's all fired up, and he wants to party. Oh, fuck yeah. But out comes Drew McIntyre. Oh, baby. He's out there to spoil the fun. And Drew wants the World Heavyweight Championship. But... He wants Seth at 100%, and Seth's still dealing with a very sore or broken back as storyline-wise. We're going with a broken back here. So, yeah, Seth is not 100%. Rollins says, sure, man, no problem. I'll give you a championship shot. Out comes Damian Priest. He attacks Seth Rollins. He calls Dom Dom to the ring with the briefcase, but Drew McIntyre, like a grumpy badass, stops that shit from going down. So no cash-in and a nice opener for Monday Night Raw. I I got a kick out of Seth being like, oh, wow, man, I'm so, like, shocked that you're asking so politely for a championship shot, because Drew just kind of came out. He didn't really say much, he was just kind of nodding his head, just being very, very calm Drew tonight, but he's still grumpy underneath, and I like it. So, pretty solid way to kick off the show. We move on to the Viking Rules match. It is Kofi Kingston going up against Ivar. So Kofi goes for a dive. He falls right on his head. (laughs) That's a great way to open up the freaking match. He's okay. He's okay. He got back up. Kofi pulls Ivar's beard, yanking him off the top rope and through a table. Good lord. Xavier Woods runs down. Valhalla acting like an animal or some shit. That creeps Woods out, so he's pretty distracted with that. Ivar puts Kofi through a table, nails the moonsault, pins, and wins. Holy jumping man. Ivar, what can I say? Another awesome performance right here for, not just for a big man, but on top of him being a big man. This is just, he's so goddamn good and really strong chemistry with Kofi Kingston. These two work so well together. There's a reason why they have fought each other so many times over the last like three or four years. And they had some nice spots in there. People were happy. They got the tables. Seven at then. Pretty good match. We got Shinsuke Nakamura and Ricochet. They have themselves a little brawl backstage. So maybe Shinsuke is now officially done with Rollins. Maybe he's going to go into something with Ricochet. Those can be some good matches right there. We got Damian Priest. He is choking poor J.D. McDonough backstage. J.D. gets saved by other members of the Judgment Day. But they warn McDonough he better beat Drew McIntyre or else. Ooh, I don't know. That's That's a tall order right there. Uh, We got Raquel Rodriguez going up against Nia Jax. I think this might be her first official match back because she's just been kind of showing up and beating the crap out of everybody. But let's see what she's got. Raquel manages to hit a powerbomb on Nia. That's impressive. Rhea Ripley runs down, attacks Rodriguez, and the match is disqualified. Boo. 
Baszler runs down to attack Nia Jax, then has a stare off with Rhea Ripley. Oh, damn. Baszler drops Ripley with a suplex and a knee to the face. I mean, yeah. Uh, interesting right here. We'll, I don't know uh, which one she's going to pick. Maybe it's going to be both, but Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax. I am definitely a little bit more into the sounds of that one over Shayna Baszler, but both could be pretty solid. We got the new undisputed tag team champions, Cody Rhodes and main event Jay Uso. They are interviewed by Michael Cole, who again is being, you know, a little bit of a cheese dick. He's asking these hard hitting questions, but he's being like just a dick about it. I don't like it. Anyway, Sammy and Kevin Owens come out. They are happy for the new champs, but they want the gold back baby cody and jay accept the challenge for later on in the show so big announcement right there we move on ricochet yet again is attacked by shinsuke this time right before his number one contenders match so it is ricochet versus bronson reed versus chad gable we got reed he lift he lifts up both gable and ricochet for a samoan drop ridiculous strength we got a super german suplex by chad ricochet landing on his feet stupid impressive a thumbs up for that but ricochet hurts his knee doing that gable hits the chaos theory bronson reappears picks up ricochet just slams him onto gable Nails the tsunami, pins, and Bronson Reed grabs a huge W. He will be facing off against Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship. Oh, baby. That is going to be a big old match right there. And damn, this match was some good shit. Three wickedly talented men just putting on a show. Would have loved for it to be a little bit longer, but you know how it is. They only have three hours, folks. And all three really impressive work in this match. Good stuff. Seven. At the, we got Becky Lynch. She is met backstage by Zia Lee. Oh wow, that's a kind of a random appearance, but I really like Zia Lee. I wish they would use her more, but they're using her now, so that's something. Uh, they may see each other again on NXT, so a little bit of a teaser right there. We'll talk about it in a moment. We got Drew McIntyre versus JD McDonough with Dom Dom. Drew hurls poor J.D. McDonough a solid, like, eight feet in the air on the backdrop. Ridiculous. Dom interfering helps out J.D. McDonough a bit, but Drew nails a Claymore for a pretty quick W right here. I mean, McDonough tried. He got in a little bit of offense, which was nice. I mean, he did uh, some of that, uh, what do you call it? Almost kind of like a Butch in the Pete Dunne, the finger crack and stuff. I like that. And Drew continues to build his momentum. We got DIY interviewed. They get jumped by Imperium, so I would like that. Imperium, Giovanni, and Kaiser versus DIY, Champa and Gargano. Oh, baby, give me that. That should be fantastic. Hopefully, if you put those two in the ring against each other a good couple of times, you build that up into something, it could really break out these two uh, tag teams that are really, really good. They just really haven't gotten the traction going yet. This could be good stuff. We move on. It is Tegan Knox. She is getting interviewed about her match. Here comes Natalia. She must get her 11 seconds of airtime. She, w- she wishes a very, very nervous-looking Knox good luck on her match. She, I mean, she was almost visibly vibrating. She's very nervous. I mean, understandably so. Huge match for her coming up. We got Adam Pierce. He tells Ricochet he will face Shinsuke in a Falls Count Anywhere match next week on Raw. So that's a big announcement right there. Rhea Ripley visibly chatting with Drew McIntyre in the background. What is up with that? I thought they were like feuding. So interesting. They didn't really touch on that at all in the show, but it was very visible in the background. So they want you to know something's going on. We got the NXT Women's Champion Becky Lynch defending the title against Tegan Knox. Oh man, biggest match for Tegan Knox right here. Let's see how she does. Tegan puts puts Becky in the disarmor. We got a nice fallaway slam and a pin combo. That was a really cool move. Becky catches Tegan in the disarmor. Knox taps out and Becky retains the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, it, honestly, I feel uh, kind of bad for uh, Tegan Knox right here. Big moment, big match for her, and the crowd just was so quiet throughout most of this. I honestly can't blame the crowd that much. Uh, they really didn't do much at all for building up to this match. Tegan showed up on TV like 
two, three weeks ago, maybe got like seven minutes of airtime. I think she got a match. It wasn't a good build for her at all. She just kind of showed up out of nowhere. And the match was honestly not that good. It was fine, a little bit clunky. Not a really good flow to it. There were the the nerves were there, and you know Becky Lynch isn't the greatest in ring per, uh, wrestler. She's a great performer. She's still got a lot of energy and everything, but she can't necessarily hold a match all by herself. If you have the right opponent with her, uh, then yeah, I mean you got a Charlotte Flair, you got an Oscar, so on so forth. I mean Becky is a fantastic partner, but. For her to have to lead and carry the match, it's not always going to be amazing. And sadly, this match just did not come off uh, the way I think those two would have wanted to, which is really a shame because I was really rooting for Tegan Knox in this match to have a good moment, and it just didn't quite get there. So uh, a little bit disappointing for sure. We move on. Tegan Knox backstage is consoled by who else? It's Natalia, plus Chance and Carter. Does anyone remember those two? They never get any airtime anymore. Uh, another NXT call-up that I just didn't understand. If you're not going to use them, just send them back down. We got women's tag champions Chelsea Green and Piper Nevin. They're talking some trash. Natalia challenges them next week or some shit. Probably a tag team match incoming for, for this group next week. We move on. It is the main event. Undisputed tag team championships on the line. Cody Rhodes, Jey Uso defend against Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens slaps Uso and all hell breaks loose. I mean, you get bitch slapped. You ain't going to be taking that lightly. So yeah, a brawl uh, goes to the outside. We got Kevin and Uso go super kick for super kick. Kevin Owens goes for a swanton. Jay has his knees up. We got a super kick, the crossroads, and a Cody Cutter 1D combo thing. Puts Kevin Owens down, and Cody and Jay Uso retain the tag team championships. Really good competitive tag team match right here. Some close calls. I mean, they didn't quite go with that formula, so there were some good... Uh, like false hot tags and like two hot tags in this one so that was nice uh kevin owens and jay uso's chemistry was quite good but also a little bit clunky at the same time it's, it's kind of hard to gauge but they were good for the most part sammy and cody's chemistry seemed to be there so i don't know like again i'm not a fan of jay uso being a tag team champion right now with cody just not where I was envision, uh, envisioning Cody Rhodes right now. And even main event Jey Uso. If, you know, if he wants to do the singles thing, why are we a tag team champion right now? Again, it just doesn't seem like a, it was going. it's going to last very long. And I'm a little bit shocked. Not shocked, but a little bit surprised that uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are not champions again. But a very good match overall. Seven and a half. And that is the end of the show. I mean... Again, I, I feel pretty bad for Tegan Knox and Becky Lynch. I don't think they're going to be pleased with that match. Crowd was silent and, I mean, sort of justified. Like I said, it wasn't that great of a match. Other than that, though, pretty loaded up Raw. couple title matches. And I am pretty pumped for Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins. That should be some really good shit. Is Drew McIntyre going to become the champion again? I mean, it's uh, it's kind of lining up like a maybe. It could, it's a pretty good chance, I would say. 7 out of 10 for Monday. Monday Night Raw this week. We'll move on to NXT. Just got to find the NXT notes. Here we go. So this NXT, holy fucking shit. This thing was loaded and we're kicking it off with Cody freaking Rhodes. He in NXT as the guest general manager for the night. So he is in control of the matches. Should be a lot of fun. The crowd is absolutely losing their minds. They're chanting yeet. Cody announces there will be a men's breakout tournament. Oh, baby. And there's going to be a Dusty Rhodes tag team tournament as well. So there you go. Taking full advantage of being in charge. Out comes the NXT champion, Ilya Druganoff. He comes out to welcome Cody Rhodes to NXT. The crowd chants happy birthday to Ilya Druganoff. Aw, that's really sweet. And happy birthday. Thumbs up for that. Good vibes are messed up by Mommy and Dom Dom. They're talking trash and they get booed viciously. Dom challenges Druganoff for a championship match. Cody makes it official. Holy jumping. Plus, we're going to need a special guest ref referee. Who that going to be? It's LA Knight. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, Cody. Hell of a way to open up the show. I mean, the crowd is absolutely white hot. 
thumbs up. That was awesome. We move on to Roxanne Perez versus Asuka with Shotzi on commentary for some reason. Roxanne sneaks out of the Asuka lock only to eat a head kick and Asuka grabs the W. Really, actually a really impressive performance here for Roxanne. She stood toe-to-toe with Asuka, uh, making it look like, you know, she could be a main eventer at some point when she inevitably gets the call up to Raw or SmackDown. She's probably going to be a women's champion at some point, and this is going to be one of those little seeds planted. Uh, I mean, it's not going to be tomorrow. It might not be next week, maybe in a month or two. But at some point, you got to thank Roxanne Perez uh, really getting set up to be a champion. Uh, Good match, though. Lots of stiff shots. Uh, Seven out of ten. I liked it. We got the Brawling Brutes and Tyler Bate going up against uh, Gallus in a six-man pub rules match. So that is a no-disqualification tornado tag as I almost pass out from no breath. Butch sticks a dart into Coffee's hand. I mean, clearly didn't actually go in his hand, but still awesome. Gallus puts Butch through a table and peanuts and beer pints all over the place. What a mess. Thumbs up for that. Bates smashes a pint glass onto Coffee's head. We got the triple powerbomb through the table. Brutes and Tyler Bate pick up the W. I mean, that was dope. That was a lot of fun. Uh, Love the pub-themed weaponry. Got darts and fucking billiard cues and, and beer. Yeah, good stuff. Strong performances from both squads and a great brawl. Eight at the... We got John... Freaking Cena in NXT, man. I did not think I'd see the day. John Cena th- says he didn't think he'd ever be here either. And the crowd is absolutely losing their minds, man. It sounds louder than Monday Night Raw. And they have like maybe one-eighth of the crowd. Like the NXT crowd is always maybe a couple hundred people. But oh my goodness. It sounds like there's thousands of people's people in there. But the best thing, there's this one guy that's screaming Cena sucks. And John like, points out him and he giggles fucking incredible thumbs up for that so john the legend thanks that dude for telling him he he sucks and he thanks the crowd they thank him back it's just a really sweet moment but out comes braun breaker the crowd chanting braun breaker sucks i mean they're not wrong cena tries to be respectful he offers his hand but braun attacks Cena almost hits the attitude adjustment, but Braun is able to escape. And Jesus, man, that was one of the loudest moments I have ever heard in NXT. And, I mean, Cody Rhodes earlier, another very loud moment. Cena a little bit louder because it's kind of crazy to see John Cena in in this environment. Really, really cool. Love this moment. I'm giving that shit a double thumbs up. Awesome stuff. We got Cody Rhodes. He meets NXT Tag Champions Dawn and Stax. Oh, champs need an opponent for Halloween Havoc. Cody announces a bada bing, bada boom, battle royale. That is exactly what he said. And this was a funny little segment. Thumbs up. We got Baron Corbin. He is getting interviewed. Claims he makes Ilya Dragunov scared. I mean, honestly, no one cares because LA Knight, yeah, is in the ring as the special guest referee for the upcoming NXT Championship match, baby. Ilya Dragunov defending against Dom Mysterio with Rhea Ripley. Champion absolutely going to town. Dom answers back with a thunderous chop of his own. And it was at this point... Dom knew he fucked up. Ilya, the look of a psychopath on his face. Judgment Day run in to help Dom. Dom, LA Knight says, Nana, takes out the trash. Judgment Day are out of there. Druganov hits the torpedo Moscow pins and retains. Jesus, the look on Druganov's face when Dom hit that chop. Absolutely priceless. So freaking good. Really fun match right here. Dom hanging with Ilya. I mean... I say it time and time again, man, Dom is legit. He can wrestle, and I would love to see them go at it again. That would be good, good stuff, and so was this match. Seven at ten. Dijak runs down. He attacks the champion after the match, beating Baron Corbin, who was on his way to do the exact same thing. Dijak is like, what are you going to do about it, bitch? 
Oh, be, oh my goodness. Dijak, I am in love with this guy. He's so freaking good. We move on. It is Trick Williams, John Cena, and Carmelo Hayes backstage. Cena eases the tension a little bit between Melo and Trick because they're kind of going through a little rocky patch. And it's a nice little moment right here between these three guys. We got Jade Cardgill. New NXT arrives in the NXT parking lot of doom. Oh dear God. Shawn Michaels thankfully is out there to protect her. So I think she's going to be okay. We move on to the women's breakout tournament. It is Lola Vice with Lopez versus Danny Palmer. So Lola kicks Palmer midair. Look pretty nasty. Hits a pretty nice hip attack right after that as well. Danny misses a corkscrew off of the top rope, but she impressively lands on her feet like holy crap. Vice applies a submission. Wicked counter by Palmer gets out of that. Lola with a vicious kick to the head grabs the W and she advances to round two. Impressive showcase right here, man. I mean, Danny, awesome agility and Lola, the martial arts skills on display. Really strong pace to this match and I like the chemistry. Really good shit. Seven out of ten. We got Chase U. They're having difficulty. Well, Mr. Chase is having difficulty with his class. So he fucking loses his mind. He's dropping F-bombs on the class again. Classic Chase U right here. Thumbs up. We got Paul Heyman. He is here. He introduces himself to Braun Breaker. Seems to go well. Heyman calls Roman Reigns. And uh, please, please put... Paul Heyman and Braun Breaker together. I mean, oh my goodness. It sounds like Brock Lesnar. It's it's a match made in heaven. You gots to do it, please. We got a video introduces us to the man formerly known as Brian Pillman Jr. He was in AEW, but he's nobody, nobody's junior now. He's going uh, to be known as Brian King. So Brian King is going to be making his debut in NXT in a little bit. I, I don't know when he's going to, but I would imagine pretty soon. Uh, it was a pretty cool intro, honestly. His hair is absolutely fucking insane i mean wow i don't know i don't even know how you do that but impressive hairline and hair and i'm kind of excited to see what he could do in nxt i mean i saw a couple flashes of him there in aew pretty impressive and uh we'll see if he's able to get out of the shadow of his dad and uh i like the way uh this this little video was set up it could be good but can't wait until uh he shows up now we go to the main event of this ridiculous NXT. It is Carmelo Hayes with John Cena versus Braun Breaker with Paul Heyman. Oh, baby. And he even does the introduction Paul Heyman style. Oh, oh, please. Just, just all the time, please. Breaker imitating John Cena's offense. Braun goes for the steel steps, but John Cena stops him. Sola Sokoa pops out of nowhere, fights with John Cena. Carmelo hits nothing but net, grabs a huge W right here over Braun Breaker. Even in defeat, Braun looking absolutely dominant. A solid match overall, a little bit of a letdown, kind of more of a storyline match, but Melo is added to the triple threat number one contenders match. Breaker spears Carmelo into a new dimension after the match. Claims he's the only badass in WWE. The lights go out. Oh dear. The bell tolls. Oh dear. Holy shit. It's the fucking Undertaker. He is in NXT. Oh my god. Taker drops Braun with a choke slam. Crowd loses it. Thumbs up. Wow. Taker celebrates with Carmelo as the show ends. Now, that one I did not see coming at all. The Undertaker in NXT. John uh, Cena in NXT. Cody Rhodes, a little bit more believable. But, wow. What a stacked up NXT. That was insane. Basically, we had a Tuesday Night War NXT going up against AEW Dynamite. We will talk about it after we talk about SmackDown, but wow, this show was insane. Did they have like a deal on flight tickets or something? Because they flew everybody out to NXT this week. Like, wow. One of the best NXTs I have seen in a long time. Big name appearances. I mean, John Cena, Cody Rhodes, and the freaking Undertaker. 
wow. I never thought I would see basically all those dudes. That was just nuts. Matches were really strong. The segments were really funny. Cody Rhodes announcing huge matches. I mean, him being the GM was awesome. And just an awesome show overall. I am blown away. So random that this NXT was so loaded. I mean, if it if it's directly a shot at AEW, then... God damn, a hell of a shot to take. 9 out of 10 for NXT this week. A really good show. You should check it out. And uh, it's probably going to be the craziest NXT we see in a minute. Now it is time for SmackDown. They are in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And you better believe it is John Cena starting off the show. He welcomes the crowd to the season premiere of SmackDown. Uh, a really random time to have a season premiere. I mean, October, Friday the 13th, a spookin', a really spooky day to start off the premiere, but I, whatever, it's all good. So out come the bloodline with Roman Reigns. Oh, snap. Roman Reigns is here. Crowd does the acknowledge me gimmick. Cena brings out his boy, LA Knight. Yeah. LA Knight versus Roman Reigns on the promos. We got Uso with a sneak attack on LA Knight. That fails. Solo challenges Knight to a match later on in the show. LA Knight calls him a dummy. Yeah. And man, it really must be a big night. Roman Reigns making an appearance. It's been a well over a month now since the last time we've seen him. John Cena being a solid hype man. And LA Knight absolutely white hot right now. Good opener to get the crowd going. I'll give it a thumbs up. We move on to Pretty Deadly. It's Elton Prince and Kit Wilson versus the Brawling Brutes, Butch and Ridge. So Holland goes absolutely ham, slamming Pretty Deadly onto one another. The military press slam onto poor Elton, who appears to be injured, but it's just a dirty trap. Wilson with the cheap shot on Ridge. We got the roll up by Prince and Pretty Deadly pick up a W in their return. I mean, a pretty nice effort here from the Brawling Brutes looking good in defeat. And Pretty Deadly, their classy, sneaky tactics, entertaining tag team match right here. Hashtag Elton Strong. And I really love uh, Elton selling the fact that he can't walk and he's been in a wheelchair but he's had a shoulder injury so they've been playing along with that really funny stuff and i am pretty happy to see pretty deadly speaking of pretty happy to see we got garlito he says that he is back in the wwe now don't you play with my heart carlito you better actually be here and don't don't leave please don't bobby lashley and the street profits welcome him back with a whooping and that's not cool that is not cool roman reigns backstage is interrogating jay uso about teaming up with cody rhodes and saying yeet he doesn't like <laughs> jimmy or jay or whatever saying yeet all the time so that's uh, pretty funny we move on to bailey with damage control going up against selena vega so selena hits a 619 Bailey, with the help from Damage Control, able to hit a rose plant for a quick W. Damage Control attacks Selena after the match. Out comes Charlotte Flair with the save, so okay. We got Triple H is here. Oh boy, he must have something big to say. Well, he's got Adam Pearce in the ring, so what are we doing? Are we firing him? No, we, uh, Triple H thanks Adam Pierce for a job well done. As the SmackDown general manager for like the last three years... I mean, that's a, it's a long reign, I guess. And then he gets promoted to the Raw general manager. So we're going to need a new SmackDown general manager. Out comes Dirty Dom. He gets booed viciously. Very funny stuff. Hunter brings out the new SmackDown general manager. It is Nick Aldis. Oh, snap. Whoa, that is that. I did not see that coming. In the first order of business, SmackDown needs a new superstar. And it's Kevin Owens. Oh my goodness. Kevin back on SmackDown or did he ever leave? I don't know. Stunner to Dom. Welcome to SmackDown, Kevin Owens. And a nice uh, kind of sneaky addition here with Nick Aldis. Uh, last time I saw him, I think he was in Impact Wrestling. Uh, and does this mean that Sammy and Kevin Owens are broken up now as a tag team and they're going to do their own things because Sammy is kind of back involved with the bloodline again and they didn't get the tag team championships and now they're on separate shows so we'll see what's happening with Kevin and Sammy next week I would imagine 
We move on. It's Roman. He is still upset. He is grilling Jay now about drinking water on his couch. Jimmy's like, are you serious with this? He heads out, and he says, yeet. So, oh, you're pushing it. You're pushing it. All right, moving on. Aldis, the new GM, shrugs off the tag champ Chelsea Green to talk with Charlotte Flair, and he gives her a rematch for the championship against Io Sky. Oh, my goodness. We're already playing favorites with Charlotte Flair. Here comes Jade Cardgill. She walks in, meets with Charlotte Flair. Flair says, I'm very familiar with her, so we're bound to have these two fight with each other at some point, but we're still waiting for Cardgill to make her in-ring debut. We move on. It is the Undisputed Tag Team Championships on the line. Jey Uso, Cody Rhodes defend against Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. Waller and Theory, some nice combo offense cutting off Rhodes. Jay and Cody with the comeback. They nail the 1D cutter to retain the tag team championships. And it was a solid match overall. I mean, uh, A-Town down Anda. They're coming together nicely as a pretty awesome douchebag tag team. And some of their moves were good. They're starting to build up some tag team offense, which is nice. Out comes Solo and Jimmy. They show up to have a stare-off with Rhodes and Jay. So... That going to be their next opponent? I can definitely see that going down. We move on to the main event. Solo Sokoa with Jimmy Uso versus LA Knight. Yeah. Solo slams Knight hard into the ring post. He takes a pretty nasty tumble to the ground, but he's okay. Jimmy tries to cheat. John Cena says, nah, nah. Goes for the FU. Solo takes out John, but this allows Knight to nail the BFT for the W. Nice performance for LA Knight right here. Slamming Solo, showing off his strength. Solo hard hitting, solid main event match. Roman spears LA Knight after the match, holding the championship high as the show ends. Oh, baby, we're going for it. Roman versus LA Knight. Lots of returns on this SmackDown. You got Roman Reigns, Carlito, and Pretty Deadly getting back in the ring there. Plus some new faces here for SmackDown. Nick Aldis, that's a big surprise. I mean, he's a great talker. Doubt we're going to see him in the ring or anything, but it should be fun to see what he's going to do for SmackDown. And, of course, Kevin Owens, a surprise. He's back on SmackDown. Uh, Hopefully he gets into some main event stuff if he's not hanging out with uh, Sami Zayn anymore. You got a tag team championship match. Yeah, pretty damn good. Six and a half out of ten for SmackDown. Pretty good stuff. And now we will go to AEW. We are going to Dynamite in Kansas. Starting off with Brian Danielson versus Swerve Strickland with Prince Nana. It is Danielson, knee, his knee gives out, Swerve boots him in the face, how you doing? Stomp off of the top rope, we got a near fall right there. Nana distracts the referee, Swerve goes for the belt, Hangman stops Swerve. We got the psycho knee and Danielson wins. Classic Danielson match, you got twisting up Swerve with all the submissions, heavy strikes, good performance from Swerve as well, nice counters, yeah, good opening match. Seven, at the We got Chris Jericho going up against Powerhouse with Don Callis because now Powerhouse is with the Don Callis family and he attacked Chris Jericho last week. So revenge is needed. But Hobbs dominates Jericho pretty easily for a huge win right here. Uh, Hobbs with this squash match. Looks like he's uh, getting a big push attached to Don Callis right now. An excellent mouthpiece. He's got all the heat. Yeah, it could be a good move here for Powerhouse Hobbs. Let's see what goes down. Next up, we got Adam Cole. He is still hanging out with the Kingdom for some reason and Roderick Strong. And uh, he's still getting taken advantage of, which is just weird. I don't really... I'm not big on these segments. They're okay. It's just kind of weird. Now we move on to an international championship match. It is Ray Phoenix defending against Orange Cassidy. Moxley was originally slated for this match, but he is not able to... He's not cleared to fight in this match, so Orange Cassidy taking his place. Orange catches Ray in a mousetrap, pins and new international champion. You gotta be kidding me. It's Orange Cassidy. Wow. What a pleasant surprise right here. Orange wasn't even originally scheduled for this match, like I said. So uh, he must be like, wow, this is awesome. Uh, really solid match considering they kind of, I would imagine they had to call this one on the fly a little bit. I don't know how last second the change was, but it was two very skilled guys kind of having to put a match uh, together quickly, and it was solid, really solid stuff, and I'm really happy to see Orange Cassidy with the title back, feel like 
you know, uh, the whole Ray Phoenix as the champion, that was, it seemed like it was kind of a mistake all said and done. I'm happy he had a chance with it, but he only had like two defenses. I don't even think he had it for like a month. So yeah, kind of a, a kind of a whoopsie a little bit right there. Anyway, we move on. Timeless Tony Storm is here. She shows a good old silent film starring herself. Now this part of it, I didn't love very much. It was, uh, just not good. You know, I didn't like it. I liked her effort, but it wasn't hitting for me. So, meh. We move on. It is Wardlow versus Matt Seidel. And Wardlow smashes and he leaves. Match is over. And, oh boy, are we doing this again? We doing this? Wardlow gonna come out and smash everybody? Okay, I'm fine with... I'll give you one more squash match with Wardlow to ease him back in. Let everybody remind the crowd who this guy is. And that's it. No more squash matches. Get on to some real matches. And Matt Seidel, he ain't no nobody. He is a somebody and he got squashed. So, I mean, uh, I'll let it pass this week. But it's it's already wearing thin with me. So, we'll move on. Hangman Adam Page versus Jay White with the Bullet Club. And Jay's still wearing MJF's AEW World Heavyweight Championship, even though it's not his. We got the meaty chops are exchanged. Oh, baby, I love the chops from these guys. Awesome stuff. Hangman, a powerbomb onto the apron looked very painful. White with a shin breaker on the apron. On <laughs> Lots of apron moves here, and they both look painful. Hangman nails a beautiful moonsault to the outside. Gotta give him a thumbs up. Just outrageous, so dangerous, but so just beautiful. Nana appears. He tries to hit Hangman with his crown. White rolls up Page, grabs the tights, and steals the W. Really good match right here. Hard hitting. These two have really strong chemistry with each other. Hangman selling the knee was some good stuff throughout, kind of building up that storyline, and, you know, uh, Jay White getting more heat. Uh, with that uh, shenanigan roll-up. You got a 7.5 out of 10. For this match, a pissed-off MJF arrives. He wants his championship back. MJF and White go promo for promo. Juice Robinson joins in a little bit, and that really pisses off MJF. He leaves. But this was a really good beginning for the promos. I imagine uh, Jay White and MJF are going to have really good right here. Thumbs up. Now we move to the second part of Timeless Tony's little silent movie thing. Much better second half. She's like kissing herself. It's her. She's trying to act sexy and stuff. It was much more entertaining. We go now to the AEW Women's Championship match. Soraya defending against Hikaru Shida with no Ruby Soho? Question mark. But no, of course Ruby appears at some point. She's trying to spray Sheeta with the spray paint. But Timeless Tony Storm runs down, smacks Soho with a shoe, and chases her off. Fuck yeah, Tony Storm. Soraya hitting two nightcaps and Sheeta kicking out of both of them. Wow. Sheeta hits a falcon arrow. Pin is countered until Sheeta catches Soraya into a counter pin and new. Three time now, AEW World Champion, it is Hikaru Shida. Wow. A solid match right here. Good striking from Shida, of course. And uh, Shida looking like an absolute beast in this match, taking two nightcaps and still kicking out. And, you know, Soraya, it was nice. She got a huge win in the hometown. That's kind of all it really felt like. She was basically a transitional champion to a transitional champion. So I'm hoping that... Sheeta will not be a transitional champion this time. She deserves to have a good run as the women's champion. And yeah, a solid match overall. It was nice to have that moment, at least for Soraya. And good to see her in the ring. It was a solid match. But uh, yeah, the Ruby Soho, the it just keeps annoying me. So we'll move on. It is Don Callis and Takeshka using the cue card, Sammy Guevara style, to cut a promo. I don't like the cue cards, so uh, meh. We move on now to the main event. Luchasaurus with Karishjian Cage versus Adam Copeland in his AEW in-ring debut. But first, Christian cuts a wicked promo on Edge. I loved it. Thumbs up. Edge has heard enough. He runs down, but he gets jumped before the bell from, by Nick Wayne and Luchasaurus. Edge demands the match be started anyway. He immediately eats a tombstone. Welcome to AEW. That made me giggle. Edge O'Matic on the apron, and then Edge launches himself off of the steps to nail a spear on the outside. Christian runs down, tries to hit Edge with the TNT Championship. 
Edge takes it, bonks Luchasaurus on the head with it. Luchasaurus thinks that Christian is the one that just hit him with the championship. They argue a little bit, rut row. Edge nails another spear and grabs his first W in AEW. There it is. Really solid start here for Edge, making Luchasaurus look monstrous because he was just whooping Edge's ass for uh, the good majority of the beginning of this match. And uh, yeah, then a brawl breaks out after the match. It is the Blackpool Combat Club and Gates of Agony. They join in. They're brawling. Hangman and Swerve, they come out. They're brawling, and Christian tapping out like a little baby to Danielson at the end of the show. And yeah, fun way to end it. Strong Dynamite this week. I don't love Wardlow doing the squash match tour yet again, but like I said, I'll, I'll give him like one more, and then we gotta move on from that shit real fast. And we got some big names on this show. New champions, championship matches, MJF and Jay White's promo battles are, oh, I'm, I'm really liking those. And of course, Edge's in-ring debut going pretty well. Seven and a half out of ten. So in the battle of Tuesday night, I give the edge to NXT. It was just a way crazier show. The atmosphere in a smaller arena with those crazy big names, John Cena and Undertaker. Kind of just was over the top. So we'll move on now to Rampage. They're still in Kansas, I think, yeah. So we're starting off with a six-man tag team match. It's the Hardy Boys and Brother Zay versus uh, Daddy Magic, Parker, Garcia with Jake Hager. Oh my goodness, a mouthful. Jake calls a timeout to have a little group huddle. Funny little moment right there. I like it. Classic Hardy offense. We got Zay hitting the poetry in motion. Haggard stops the Swanton Bomb from going down. Garcia takes Zay's head off with a Lariat. We got the dance. Big DDT. Garcia pins and wins. Yeah. Good opening tag team match right here. Really like Zay and Garcia's performances in this one. Uh, Zay with his shrieks, but he also had a good dancing moment with Garcia. And of course, Garcia the dance. And a really strong performance right there. And the Hardys out there doing their thing. It's good. Good match. Seven at... We got the Bang Bang Gang. They're talking trash to Penta and Alex backstage. I love the irony right here of Jay White making fun of Penta not having any championships. And neither does Jay White. He's holding a championship that isn't his. So uh, the irony is not missed on me. Good stuff. And then, oh God, speaking of good stuff, we got Matt Menard absolutely exploding backstage. He is not impressed with Garcia's dancing and oh, Matt Menard and Parker, man, I, I WWE missed out on these guys. They were there for a second. I thought they were a perfect fit. I think if they went to WWE now, it'd be a fantastic fit. I love these guys. They're so entertaining, especially when Matt Menard starts screaming, what are you doing? I can't do it, but it's so good. Moving on, Jay Lethal with the Entourage versus Trent Beretta with Chucky e. T. Trent dives at Lethal, misses, and crashes into the ropes. That just looked kind of painful. We got the lethal injection, puts Trent away, and Jay grabs a W with barely, if any, help from the Entourage. So that was a nice surprise and a good back and forth match right here from some familiar foes. Obviously, the chemistry is there between these guys. They fought probably a million times now. Seven at the and we got Santina and Ortiz have an intense backstage confrontation. The challenge is set and accepted. Former friends, now enemies, fight next week. It's going to be ugly. And it was a good little like back and forth intense segment right here. I'm pretty excited for these two to rip each other to shreds. Should be good. Speaking of good, it's my girl, Emi Sakurai woo, versus Sky Blue. Sakura absolutely going to town with the heavy chops. She smushes Blue into the steel steps on the outside and nails a nasty backbreaker. Good lord. Thumbs up for all that. Blue rallies back. Code Blue out of nowhere grabs an impressive win over the veteran. I mean, Sakura, great performance. Love it. So clean and hard hitting. Mm, so good. And Blue, very, very resilient performance. Took an ass kicking from the veteran but came back for the w good quick match right here yeah seven at then we got claudio and wheeler yuda going up against the gates of agony con and leona with prince nana 
Yuta hits a Judgment Slam. Does anyone remember that? It's a really good-looking move. Anyway, Claudio takes out Leona. Ricola bomb Yuta onto Khan for the victory. Really hard-hitting tag team match right here. I mean, pretty much that's expected when you got Claudio and Yuta. And, of course, Gates of Agony. No, not shying away from the hard-hittingness. Yuta, awesome performance, taking an absolute beating in this match, but he was giving it right back. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Wheeler, but man, that guy is intense, and he's fantastic in the ring. And Gates of Agony, also hard-hitting, great mix with the Blackpool Combat Club. I would like these guys to take this to the next level. Seven and a half, at then, and that was the main event. And that's the end of the show. Hell yeah, Rampage. They took out that fucking squash match and just kind of gave more time and had longer, more competitive matches. With some funny quick segments in there to break up all the action. Much, much better formula. I'm a happy boy. Really good job, Rampage. Seven and a half out of ten. And we finish off AEW with Collision in Toledo. We got Adam Copeland Edge in the ring interrupted. By Christian with an entourage of security guards. He's got Nick Wayne and Luchasaurus. Christian trash talking while hiding behind his big old wall of security. Great imagery. Brian Danielson arrives to announce that Luchasaurus and Nick Wayne are banned from ringside for their match later on tonight. Thank God. New AEW Tag Champions, Big Bill and Ricky Starks, they're angry that everyone's taken up their airtime. FTR have ha- heard enough of Ricky's complaining. They want the tag titles back. And then we have the big old-fashioned brawl breaks out. And it's pretty solid opening. Honestly, it got watered down with too many people coming out. It was starting out really good. It just... Got watered down for me personally, but it was fun to see Edge cutting loose a bit, not with the WWE script. He can kind of go off a script and say some things. It was kind of nice to see. He's a little a little bit shaky, but he's he'll get there. He'll get there. He was having some fun with Ricky Stark. So a decent opening to Collision. We move on to the Ring of Honor World Television Championship match. Samoa Joe defending against Willie Mack. Willie dives over the ropes. Crashes onto Samoa Joe and he like tumbles into the announce table, smacks into it. It falls apart a little bit. Kind of a a moment right there. We got Mac with the titty twister, everybody. Hits a cannonball and he lands on his feet while doing it. Friggin' awesome. Thumbs up for that. Joe ends Willie with a muscle buster to retain the championship. And it's always nice to see Willie Mac getting a shot. On TV and for a championship, that's always good. Really good big man performance from Willie, and of course, Joe throwing the heavy strikes continues his really hot streak in AEW slash Ring of Honor. Really solid match. We got Action Andretti backstage looking to acquire the services of CJ, that is, um, Rusev's slash Miro's wife or girlfriend or whatever she is to him. Moving on, Juice Robinson with the Bang Bang Gang versus Christopher Daniels. Robinson hits the Juice is loose for an impressive W over the veteran Daniels. Fine match right here, pretty standard stuff. Jay White gifts Juice with his own ring, so similar to MJF's AEW Dynamite ring or whatever. He uses it right away to knock out Daniels. Oh, no. Bang, 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 no, the Bang Bang Gang. They cut a good promo on MJF and some more good stuff as that rivalry continues on. We got Kyle Fletcher. Oh, baby. He is going up against Boulder. I forget what tag team he's a part of, but his name is Boulder. Fletcher hits a powerbomb, locks in the Dragon Sleeper, and picks up another W, building more momentum. This kid is on fire. Solid quick match right here. We got the Acclaimed and Daddy Ass. They have a fun backstage moment with the former JAS squad. Garcia dances, and Menard absolutely flips out. Funny moment. Thumbs up. We move on to the TBS Championship match. Chris Statlander defending against Sky Blue, who's wearing like this new makeup. I think she might be possessed by Julia Hart. I don't I can't confirm that, but it might be a thing. Possessed or not, Blue on fire with a tornado DDT. Avalanche power bomb, but Statlander catches Sky in midair, slamming her hard. Blue battles back, but 
Chris again catching Sky, this time with a Saturday night favor to retain. I would say this is a kind of a breakout performance for Sky Blue right here, standing her ground with probably the hottest woman in AEW and Chris Statlander. Lots of counters in this match. The near falls were really good. And just a really good back and forth match. Nice stuff. Seven and a half out of ten. We got Kyle Fletcher backstage. He calls out Kenny Omega for a match next week. Oh, baby. Yes, please. I am going to love that. We got Keith Lee going up against Turbo. We got the pounce. We got the spirit bomb. Keith Lee wins in a squash match. And, you know, not the best performance here. I mean, Keith Lee looking bored while out there. Um, still looking to get some traction here in AEW. Is this the start of something? I don't know, man. It just hasn't been very good with Keith Lee in AEW. Moving on, it's main event time. TNT Championship on the line. Christian Cage defends all by himself versus Brian Danielson. So Christian slams Brian's elbow onto the apron. That looked painful. Now Brian's dealing with a bummed arm throughout the match. Christian busted open from a diving headbutt from Brian. Danielson goes for the psycho knee. It doesn't hit. Christian nails an unprettier instead. Danielson is too damaged to keep the label lock applied. Big Bill distracts the referee. Starks runs down. Hits Brian with the belt. Christian pins and retains. Oh man, Christian reminds everybody in this match that he is still a workhorse. Heck of a performance, just all around good wrestling. Heel performance, getting the crowd involved. Good job, Christian. And Danielson stretching uh, Christian throughout the whole match. Lots of fun to watch. 8 out of 10, that was a great match. The beatdown continues on Brian with Nick Wayne helping out. Out comes FTR and Adam Copeland. Edge hits a spear to send the crowd home happy. And that's the end of the show. An alright opening half of this show, but it did ramp up to a pretty damn strong second half of the show. Uh, Collision, at this point, now that CM Punk is gone, it looks like it's Brian Danielson's show. Maybe throwing a little Edge and Christian in there. I've heard that the uh, ratings and uh, ticket sales have still been really not good for Collision, even with Edge and all that stuff. So, I don't know. Collision's still kind of spinning wheels a little bit, but I thought it was a good show overall. 7 out of 10, and that's all the wrestling. So, let's move to the three stars this week. We got a couple shout-outs here. We got Yuta and Claudio versus Gates of Agony on Rampage. Really good match between two really good tag teams that were beating the ever-living bejesus out of each other. Really liking Gates of Agony. Got to shout out Christian and Danielson, the main event match on Collision. Really, really good stuff. Don't get to see Christian too often in the ring because he's such a, such a mouthpiece and it builds to his heel character, but... He can still go, absolutely, and Danielson just playing with his food a little bit was a lot of fun. And now for the official three stars, starting with the third star, we got Gallus going up against the Brawling Brutes and Tyler Bate in that pub rules match. Oh man, lots of fun, and uh, they, did, they got very much into the themed pub weaponry with the darts and the billiard cues I was really enjoying that match pretty hard hitting and uh, yeah Gallus really coming along right now on NXT second star goes to Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura last man standing at Fastlane I'm not always the biggest fan of last standing matches because some of them could be a real drag and slow but this one was not so much that it was a pretty well paced last man standing match they had a lot of good spots into there in the rivalry of Shinsuke and Seth. Though it's not the best, but they did have a pretty good build to it. And it had a pretty nice payoff, I would say. Good enough for the second star this week. And the first star goes to Asuka versus Charlotte Flair versus EO Sky. Triple threat match for the Women's Championship at Fastlane. This was Really awesome. A great pace to this one. All three women getting involved. And really awesome to see EO getting the win here over Asuka and Flair. Probably the two biggest names in WWE right now. I think EO Sky is a fantastic talent. Uh, she doesn't have the mic skills, obviously. But 
Damn, is she ever awesome and a huge win for her there at Fastlane over the most established stars in the business right now. So that is it for me, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to the WrestleCast. We will be back again real soon with some more GX Plus Cast. We're doing uh, Halloween scary spooky stuff for the gamer cast this month. So uh, I did 13 Scariest Enemies. We did Resident Evil 5. I got a mystery horror game that I'm wanting to talk about this week. I just have to beat it I'm right around the end of it now. So I should be talking about a mystery horror game this week. That'll be a lot of fun. NHL season is underway. So there's going to be lots to talk about on the hockey cast. A whole bunch going on with the Leafs right now. Oh, baby. Lots of fun. So yeah, stick around. With the GX Plus cast, there's an email address if you want to send in any questions. Have them read out on the podcast related to wrestling, hockey, or video games. Send in your questions. Great place for that. You can send it on the Twitter account. The link is down below. These also get uploaded to YouTube on the Gamer GX Videos YouTube channel. Link is all down there in the description, so you can follow along there. Watch these, drop comments, and review the podcast, please, and thank you. Help out the little guy. And yeah, everybody, enjoy the rest of your weekend. We will be back again soon with more GX Plus Cast. Yeah.